dark, cold world out there. There's a time to live and a time for a man to die. There are places for dead men in the earth and the sky. Don't you venture too far now, cause you can't come back. From the place where the good guys always dress in black. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Ring Respect Radio. I am Bobby Munson, joined by the man with the angelic voice, Papa Smokes, beside me. But we're joined by a very, very special guest. You see him right there. He is the Lion Warrior, Bobby Sharp, who's going to be making his return to a professional wrestling ring this month. Love Pro Wrestling 5 in Edmonton, Alberta. Bobby, fantastic to see you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, and as we were saying, you're making your long-awaited debut or return back to Edmonton <laughs> mm-hmm. this month here, January, uh, June 24th, mind you, uh, in the ring for Love Pro Wrestling. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that because you had some time off. Uh, not only did the pandemic kind of slow things down, mm. but you yourself had a little bit of an injury. Uh, what, uh, what went down and uh, how's, how are things going since? Yeah, so uh, the injury was wasn't so much like a specific a specific event, but uh, it's been a nagging one. It was from a car accident in 2016, and it, then uh, I continued to wrestle with a uh, torn labrum, and it just got worse and worse and worse as time went on. I'm not too sure if people know, but I got a full a total hip replacement of my of my left wow. my left hip. It's totally brand new. But um, yes, yeah, so this is my return to wrestling in general. Like I haven't done outside just like personal stuff and training on my own any type of wrestling and even that just recently but yeah so i had uh i tore my labrum in 2016 in a car accident on a way to a wrestling show we still made the show mind you and then we went and wrestled in moose jaw drove the nine hours back home i realized something was wrong so through the years there uh, from 2016, 17, 18, I would do things to see what I could do to take the pain away, see if I could repair it. Once, so I don't know what people know about the labrum, but it's the same thing. It's in your shoulder. It's the bone that sits in the socket, and, and it's the flesh and muscle that sits around the bone. So when you tear that, it grinds. So it was grinding my hip bone down. Uh, over Basically, just walking, <clears throat> literally walking was grinding it down. <clears throat> and wrestling was definitely not, not helping one bit. <laughs> Um, probably the worst thing I could think of for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <I> uh, imagine. <laughs> so then, uh, my doctor suggested, uh, to get a, a scope and some repairs done to the labrum and it should prolong the inevitable hip replacement, which hopefully will be a couple years, 15, 20 years down the road at the time. So I had surgery for the labrum and it went okay. After about 12 weeks post-surgery, uh, I started experiencing a lot of pain and it just basically never went away. It got worse, worse and worse. In the end, what ended up happening was I got, I guess, a bone degeneration disease from the surgery. And instead of it making it better, it completely ate away at all the cartilage. Uh, there was, ended up being the bone was, was, it was bone on bone. There was no protection, no cushion, no nothing. Um, so then I tried some other options, see what else I could do. And, you know, I'm still wrestling, uh, working out, yoga, rehab as much as I can. Uh, very physically active, but it's, it's killing me. Um, I started doing cortisone shots and I, I know there's risks there, but I won't get into all that. But anyway, by my, those helped by my third cortisone shot. The doctor said, Hey, you're creating, uh, there's cysts that are being created on your bone. Uh, cause it's so much pressure from the bone on bone. So the bone starts like, like how does my knuckles here? The bone starts. So then when they inject the cortisone, uh, because it's uneven, they said it might, it's going to pop or something's going to happen and it's going to be worse. So they can't do cortisone anymore. So I was given no other option. It was like hip replacement or just live with it. Uh, and my doctor made the recommendation instead of, cause like, you know, most times they'll be like, wait until you're older. My doctor's like, you should do it now. You should get it done the moment things open up. And then the pandemic hit and I had to wait another year, <laughs> another year <laughs> to get it done. Yeah. But finally, yeah, finally, I'm glad I did it now. I feel great. For sure. And how do you go about uh, mentally and physically preparing yourself for a return after such a long time off uh, going into this? <laughs> what are your expectations uh, coming up on June 24th? Physically, it was probably the easier part. Mentally is definitely the harder part. I'm My confidence is like, I don't want to say it's I'm sh- it's shattered just for other reasons. So coming back, uh, overthinking, just, just thinking about it every single day. And I'm thinking about, I was thinking about coming back 
every single day since I had this surgery. And, and not just that, but like, I still watch wrestling. I still come up with ideas. I still write stuff down and, and I still love it so, so much. And not being able to do it, because it was always such an outlet for me. Like, every any wrestler would tell you if they sit and watch tapes, their heart rate will start beating a little bit faster and they'll start thinking about stuff they want to do and they'll start getting a little bit active and then they'll be like, you know what, I want to go up and wrestle right now. And they'll always say that. So that's kind of what the, the point I was in is I wanted to do it watching tapes, but I couldn't. And mentally, it was just like being being able to watch it but not do it, um, it just it was brutal. So that's been the hurdle I've been trying to overcome. But uh, being having Spencer give me the date, June 24th, because this was, this was kind of like something me and him talked about. I, I wanted a specific, because my doctor clearing me was going to be a specific day. And I wanted my return to be a specific day because in my mind, mentally, if I'm building towards this is the specific day that this is all going to happen, it almost feels like because it's a short-term goal, it's it feels like it's going to be easier hurdle to mentally overcome than to think, well, I'm going to have one more run. You know, I want to get through this first match before I start thinking how many guys am I going to feud with or am I going to go wrestle everywhere or that, that kind of stuff. I just want to get through this one match and – I think it's going to be, I'm going to be prepared, but I'm never going to think I'm prepared. It's going to be something, it's going to be mm. quite the sight for sure. But I'm going to turn this over to Pop Smokes to take the floor. I know he's itching to ask you a few questions too. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I wanted to say thanks, Bobby, for doing this interview. It's really nice mm-hmm. to see you after a few years. Uh, you always entertain the crowd so good in <laughs> Saskatoon and uh, we've all missed you a lot. But uh, I was kind of wondering about... Um, you're obviously, a, as a wrestler, you're a body guy, and uh, you've done a lot of bodybuilding and all that. How has that been affected through these past couple of years? Have you been able to keep to your regimen? Have you been able to work out some other areas uh, of your body as, that didn't require your hips? Uh, how's that going? As crazy as it sounds, I've probably gotten into, like, cosmetically the best shape I've ever been in. Uh, I've always looked at, like, working out as, like, there's cosmetic and there's functional. So usually the guys that look the best aren't the most functional. You got to find a good balance. Even though I wasn't like, like you said, I had to switch stuff up because my function went down. So I couldn't do the things I wanted to do leg wise, but I would work around it. Uh, I, I love the gym. So I'm very, I'm always thinking of stuff there too. I'm very creative and with ideas, watching other people learning from the magazines. Um, so in the last couple of years, because of this injury, I started putting more of my focus on, on my diet. And it changed everything. It uh, changed absolutely everything. Because before I would just kind of work out and not worry about what I ate as long as I felt good to keep training and keep wrestling and having shows. And, and I always thought when if I was wrestling like 150 times a year, um, I don't have time to sit and like count my calories and dab grease off my food and have that bodybuilder diet. I need to eat food so I feel recovered and repaired so I don't get hurt. So now that I slowed down a little bit with the pandemic and the injury, I was able to watch my diet and then I just leaned out. So I'd say like, just because it forced me to take another uh, path, like my knowledge on fitness changed entirely and improved. So there are definitely some uh, silver linings to this whole injury. Oh, awesome. Uh, Bob Smokes, uh, floor's still yours, dude. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh we were thinking about uh, the last time we saw you wrestling in Saskatoon a few years ago. You were one of the uh, main event heels going on in uh, the HIW promotion. And uh, what are your thoughts about your return? About uh, are, are your feelings on the uh, side of the fans, or are you going to uh, kind of give the finger to the fans? Any idea about that yet? You know, uh, as, as much fun as it is, like I'm, I'm doing this one for for the fans. So. I, I'm coming back for them, and this is kind of – if this is it, if I can't keep going, I want them to know that I was wrestling for them as much as they might like me or, or, or like to hate me. Uh, so I'm coming back for them this time. But, you know, if I feel good, give it time because I'm an asshole at heart. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, there is an absolute plethora of people on the Love Wrestling <laughs> roster that have been there uh, probably itching for an opportunity to – take you on that night i know Mm -hmm. that the match is not set in stone just yet but maybe there's a a person or two on that on that roster maybe you've seen uh maybe an up-and-comer somebody with a little experience anybody that you might fancy yourself in the ring with um so one of the things about me is that like i love wrestling new people and people i've never had a chance to have tags or singles because uh there's a lot of guys i've wrestled that 
I would list right away and be like, that match would be top notch because you got to think of guys like MRB and Randy Myers. But I've wrestled those guys before, had great matches. Those would be the top of my list regardless. But for guys, I want to think about guys that I've never wrestled before. And I've never had a singles match with, like, say, Jack Pride. And I've never had a singles match with Mars, the specialist. So those two guys really stand out as guys I've never gotten the chance to mix it up with that I'd really, really like to to create something really unique with them. Um, but then there's other guys uh, that have kind of changed their attitudes, like Kenneth Stryker. I've had him, wrestled him 15 times, but I'd still like to have another match with him because it's a different guy now. <laughs> it's a completely different guy. <laughs> so uh, to me, it's a different match. But the two I mentioned before, Jack Pride probably stands out because he's been around uh, as long as he has. We've actually never... I, maybe we've done some tag. I believe we might have done some tag team matches, but we've never had a meaningful interaction. So that one probably would be the one that stands out right now. Yeah, he's an amazing talent, and that would be a hell of a match to check out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Smokes, uh, putting the floor back over to you, man. Yeah, I was also going to uh, ask you about, uh, we've been mentioning COVID shutdown, where we all had some extra time on our hands. And uh, I've been asking everybody we interview here uh, what they watched during that. Uh, I'm sure you had some extra time to go back and watch some of the stuff you've been thinking about or wanting to watch over the years. <laughs> What, what kind of stuff do you watch to get yourself mentally ready? Um, <laughs> so I either watch wrestling or I watch anime or I watch documentaries. So that's kind of how I went there. For wrestling, um, I found myself, I'm not going to say I was watching myself or, or, or our product, but I actually went back and watched the Wild Side TV episodes a lot of the time. <laughs> if I was to look at anything I did or anything like that, um, I went back. Uh, Dynamite Kid actually popped up because I had a friend over uh, from the Maritimes and uh, who was a wrestler, and we just ended up watching wrestling and just Dynamite Kid. So we were watching Dynamite Kid and like Tiger Mask or like the Bulldogs and and Furnace and Lafon and all these types of matches. Uh, so him quite a bit for some. Well, I wouldn't say for some reason he's one of the best. So Dynamite Kid was yeah. one I watched during this whole pandemic. Like I always, he would be a go-to. He would be the start of my rabbit hole where it was like I want to watch some wrestling, but there's so many options. I would type in Dynamite Kid, and then I would just kind of see what you know. I'd watch a Dynamite Kid match, and then I would move. <laughs> okay, so who else do they recommend? Oh, Terry Gordio, go watch some Terry Gordio. Oh, Stan Hansen, I'll go watch. You know that kind of thing. So usually he's kind of where I start my rabbit hole. So I, yeah, I'll give credit to watching his matches. <laughs> and nothing wrong with starting the rabbit hole there whatsoever. Yeah. So those are some excellent uh, matches to be watching. Uh, again, Papa Smokes, what do you, what's on your mind there? Or Papa Smokes is freezing out, so we'll uh, we'll let him get back. But yeah, you did mention about going back and watching the Wild Side TV stuff, mm -hmm. and again. You know, the, you know, learned to uh, ourselves even learned a lot during that period of time and stuff like that. Uh, being that we were given direction on how the program was going to go and stuff like that, mm. and how we were to speak, and we're given guidance, which again, that's good for us, was invaluable. Like, uh, we got so much great advice from so many great wrestlers, including yourself, mm -hmm. MRB, El Asesino, and all the people that we had the uh, fortunate experience to work with during those times uh i do find it difficult to go back and listen to some of the things we were saying like, <laughs> you know i would do things differently now knowing what i yeah. know of course and stuff like that but it is go to, good to go back and revisit your early work to see where mm. you're at and where you can build and grow from there so. <laughs> yeah i mean like i think i don't think you guys give enough credit i thought it was a really good show as it is uh, every so often, yeah, I see things that I do that I make me cringe and be like, oh, no, I can't believe we put that on there. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, for for what it really was, because I think you guys just did it in your spare time as like for experience. And yep. I thought it was a pretty solid production for YouTube. And we got, God, like 40, 40 episodes more than that. No, or no. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Was, were we just shy of 50? Because I think we were originally planning to do a 50th uh, mm -hmm. episode party or something like that originally. So, yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, it was definitely like I understand what happened in the end, but like what what I sometimes think what could have been. <laughs> yeah, well, we're trying to trying to still work the same thing here in Saskatoon mm -hmm. as much as possible with PPW That's moving good. forward and everything too. But uh, Bob Smokes, now that you're unfrozen and back and joining the fold, uh, what else is on your mind, brother? Yeah, I was kind of wondering what was going on there. I wondered if you, <laughs> you guys talking, but uh, yeah, well. Uh, 
I know that you're not looking past your return date too, too much yet, but if that goes well, uh, what are you thinking? Do, are, do you still want to travel around to some of the uh, prairie provinces and wrestle, or are you going to stay mainly in your home um, base in Edmonton? Uh, I, I think that if I, if I was, uh, if, if things go well and I've got a pretty high feeling and like 99.9%, I'll never say 100, but I'm pretty sure it will go well. Uh, the way I looked at it is that things are different for me now because, because it was taken away from me and I had doctors telling me I might never be able to do this again. And I, I definitely wasn't ready because I was 31 before the surgery. And then after I had the surgery, they said, you might not be able to wrestle again. And I definitely wasn't ready. So then now being able to come back, it's a little bit different and special to me where I do want to come to all the places that I've gotten to wrestle before and at least have one last, like, you know, one last match there. Cause if, if I don't go back for a bunch of companies, at least I can go to Saskatoon or, or Regina and Moose Jaw, which would be the three and I had Prince Albert cause I wrestled a lot there, which would be the places there. That I'd like to go have at least one more match in front of those audiences. I'm thinking the same with, with British Columbia and, and Manitoba, Ontario and the Maritimes is I want to go back to these places that I did before and at least give them one, at least more for me, but if the fans want to see me one more time, by all means, but have one more match in these areas and these places. And especially if I get the chance to wrestle guys uh, and girls that I never got to wrestle before, I'd be more than willing, more than willing to do that. And I would rather do, travel out of Alberta than just stay here. Even though there's tons of, of matches, if I want them here, I'd still rather travel out of Alberta than stay here. Uh, and I'm sure you'd be welcome uh, with open arms here in Saskatoon, for sure, even by the fans who <laughs> might not have been favorable to you in the past, but everybody loves a good comeback story. And you know what? It would be a fantastic comeback story. Uh, before we bring things to a wrap, Pop Smokes, anything else you'd like to ask here today? Yeah, there is not so much ask, but I have a story I'd like to tell. <laughs> Speaking of some of these old uh, HIW shows from a few years ago, I'll try and keep this brief, but there's a compliment <laughs> in here for you, Bobby. So uh, you might want to hear this. I went to one of those shows with my friend who brought his little nephew, who is 13 or 14 years old. The kid watches wrestling on TV, but I don't think he really had the full idea of what it was all about. <laughs> so we thought we got to bring him to a live show. So we brought him. It was the show after at the main event and after the main event. Uh, I was Bobby Sharp beating up Kat Von Heath, <laughs> his real life wife, oh, and beating her up, giving her a pile driver on a chair, and then cutting her hair off with a big old pair of scissors. You goddamn this, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now this kid we were with was absolutely disgusted by this for real. <laughs> he was getting so mad in the crowd, and we were kind of chuckling about it. And we were thinking he did a good job of this. The kid got so mad, he's telling us, like, will you guys do something? Like, I'm not big enough to get in there. You guys got to do something about this guy. He's beating up his wife. And we said, yeah, well, we, we can't really do anything, but we'll make sure something gets done. <laughs> when, we walked outside, when we walked outside the venue, you could hear the sound of a siren, a police siren going somewhere else in the city. And we said, hey, man. That's the cops. They're coming here. And we called them about Bobby Sharp, and he said, "Good." If you guys didn't, I was gonna phone the cops. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's, that's beautiful. So that's being over right there. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time a cops been called on me. So <laughs> that's oh, that's just, I love it. Yeah, she yeah. Cut, she cut my hair in the end, so you know. <laughs> yeah. well, it seems to be coming back in just fine, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh from there uh if that's all you got papa folks i think we're gonna bring things to a wrap but i want to keep you too long just very much appreciated that you did this but outside of love pro wrestling five on june the 24th at the rec room edmonton alberta and right on twitch as well too so throw your subscribes over to love wrestling on twitch mm -hmm. to be able to watch and a chat in the chat room to watch bobby sharp live that day bobby where else can people find you on the show social media and anywhere else coming up uh, so you got Twitter at Lion Warrior AB, uh, my Instagram, which is at Bobby should get Insta. Long story, maybe I'll tell it one day. <laughs> but um, as far as future wrestling shows, definitely keep your eyes peeled. I'll be announcing everything on uh, my Instagram and uh, my Twitter. Um, so as long as you follow those, you'll be able to see some of the future shows. I have stuff in the works. So Calgary, Medicine Hat, Lethbridge, Prince George, Vancouver. Winnipeg. All right. Yeah. 
keep your eyes peeled those places especially <laughs> beautiful we're looking forward to it and looking forward to june the 24th love pro wrestling 5 the return of bobby sharp thank you for joining us thank on you. respect radio everybody take care and have a good night good night thank you guys thank you <laughs>